fill that void by getting down into the trenches and talking directly with fans and even going out and pulling fans in by interacting on other people's pages and commenting on their social media. Remember, everyone has a different vibe and there is no right or wrong way to go about talking to people on your page. So engage in any way that you are most comfortable doing so. Just remember to try to maintain a consistently positive attitude with your fans and block out the trolls and possible negativity that others might throw at you along the way. All right, to, so to review the quick start guide for your first seven days on the site, in your first week, you should set out the goal of getting your OnlyFans page started on the right track. Begin to build out the social media channels that have the most potential to draw in new fans and begin to learn the rhythm of the site and the fan community that you hope to build in the long term. And remember that on OnlyFans, your success is pretty much 100% up to you, but that you need others to like you and your content in order to get ahead on the platform. So if you follow a steady path towards creating quality content and interacting with fans, you could very well be the next big success story on the site. Okay, so those were the first seven days. So as promised, I, will, I also want to go over some tips for the rest of the month. Now, there might come a time when I decide to do an entire podcast on your first month on OnlyFans, uh, which will extend out uh, further. But here are some other things, say, in the first four weeks after your first week that you want to really concentrate on. One, you want to establish your niche. Right now, I've also written and talked about niches to death, niche, whichever way you want to pronounce it, um, niches, and I am a huge uh, proponent and fan of this because uh, in the very beginning, you have to sort of carve out your own area that you can dominate and protect, and that's usually a small area. So let me, you know, tell you more about that that thought. So basically when you when you start you're going to pick something that is small because it's going to be something that you can get some traction on. That doesn't mean that you keep that long term. It means that you start small and you grow big. So when I tell uh, creators to get a niche, uh, it basically means find something uh, you know, that you can look at that you are passionate about, that you actually fit into that niche, you're not forcing yourself into it, that might have a smaller amount of competitors. And that could mean a smaller amount of people who are buying into that niche as well. Um, I tend to use, uh, when I talk about that, uh, goth aesthetic. Um, so there are very few people uh, or creators with goth aesthetic, uh, but there are people who specifically are attracted to that. Uh, not every single person who's on OnlyFans is going to be interested in uh, that particular aesthetic. But in the very beginning, if you can get kind of, uh, you know, build in, build up that community, then you can expand out beyond that. So say in the very beginning, you do goth aesthetic or you do uh, some sort of gamer girl aesthetic uh, and, you know, over time you, you build those fans and that's something that you can protect. It's, it's not so big and it's not so broad that you can't protect that concept. But then over time, you can then move beyond just your goth aesthetic or your gamer girl aesthetic. And you can say, okay, now I'm going to be doing this other type of content and broaden out. But if you never get that kind of foothold or never get those initial subscribers and those initial people who are interested in you, you're never going to have the ability to get particularly big. And, you know, most OnlyFans creators are not starting out big. They are starting out slowly growing until they hit, you know, month four, five, six, and they just keep increasing that percentage. So very much in your first month, you want to establish some sort of niche for yourself. You know, if you're just so general that you blend in with the rest of the crowd, then you're probably not going to succeed on the platform. Okay, then next, find a creator to emulate. 
right? Now, when I say emulate, I do not mean copy. Uh, that means that you want to look at a successful creator and figure out what they are doing that is right. And you can even look and say things they are doing that are wrong. That might be helpful. So if you're looking at that particular creator, you might say, hey, there's this one area that they're not doing that, that there's probably an audience for that I can fill that void. And, you know, you won't see that void unless you go out and look for it. So you won't find that there's holes to be able to fill until you go and you do the research. And you definitely want to find a creator in your first month that you can sort of latch on to. Uh, hopefully, it would be great if you would, able, were, would be able to communicate with them. Um, I've talked about finding an OnlyFans mentor previously in previous episodes. If you're able to reach out to that person and talk to them, that's great. Um, if they don't have the time for that and you just want to look at their progress uh, and the process that they've gone through uh, and all their content and sort of evaluate, then you should do that. But you definitely should look into finding a creator that you can emulate. And when I say emulate, as I mentioned, no copying. That means people will notice if you take word for word their promotions or you know you do things that are pretty much unethical. Uh, so copying is not ethical. It's not ethical marketing practice and it will definitely turn people off to you. So you know but emulating meaning you know taking something and you know, that you see someone doing successfully and adding your own flair to it, that is fine. And that's a way to success. Okay, next I would say, find your launch social media platform. So also another thing, if you've listened to the podcast, you know that I'm a big proponent of finding that social media platform that is your launching point. And for a lot of people, they, they go all to all the different social media platforms and just sort of establish a small flag. It's like if you ever played Monopoly, it's like instead of saying, OK, I'm going to put a houses or hotels, <laughs> sorry, hotels on a particular uh, property, I'm just going to put one little house on, you know, eight properties and hope that that works out. And it doesn't. You know, it's better to have a hotel on on one property than it is to have one did I keep saying hotel? One <laughs> house, sorry, one hotel on one property than to have one house on a whole bunch of different properties. I mean, you basically see what I'm saying there is, is that you want to dominate a specific um, social media channel and you want to build up on that particular social media channel so that people will know you and people will pay attention to you. People pay attention to the numbers. So if somebody has hundreds of thousands of followers on Twitter, it doesn't really matter if they have one follower on Instagram. People will be paying attention to you on Twitter. And then you can say, hey, by the way, I haven't been paying attention to my Instagram. Could you all go fill that up, please? Um, you know, you look at you know, a, a creator out in the world, like on YouTube, like Mr. Beast. Mr. Beast uh, became super popular on YouTube, and so he has a bunch of followers on Twitter. I really don't think he engages a ton on Twitter. They just sort of found him on Twitter because he's on YouTube, and he became super popular on that social media channel. So he built his his hotel right there, and then basically people found him on the other social platforms. That's what you want to do. So you want to make sure that you find that launch social media platform. And I've definitely talked about how to find that. Um, you know, it should be based on uh, your skill set, what you like to do. Each social media channel is about different things. Some are about performance, you know, in video. Some are about audio. Some are about pictures. You know, so it's, it's whatever you are most comfortable doing and you feel your skill set is set up for success, that's the social channel that you want to target. Okay, and then next, find creator allies. So one great thing about OnlyFans is, is that it is basically like, uh, you know, crowdfunding. It's basically like one of those things where it's the community is the whole thing. So without the crowd, without the creators, there would be no OnlyFans. So there's a lot of people that you can interact with out in the world, out in social media that are also trying to do the same exact thing that you're doing. 
and you should look and say, okay, how can we help each other out? And so a lot of people are going to be open to helping you the same way that you can help them. So you definitely want to find creator allies. You know, these people exist on Twitter. They exist on Reddit, say on um, our OnlyFans advice. You'll find a lot of different creators, a lot of creator support. You want to make sure that you become part of the community. And even if you are a person who is shy and doesn't necessarily want to ever post or interact, you at least can read and learn from all of the people who are posting. And they are constantly, there are tons and tons of great people within the OnlyFans community who basically just post free information as much as they can to help other creators, which is wonderful, you know, about succeeding. So you definitely want to find creator allies, whether or not you're going to speak to them consistently, whether or not you're going to share each other's pages, uh, that's up to you. But you should at least find the people who are the allies and at least get the information from them. Okay, next is A, B, test your pricing. Okay, so one big thing is is that you don't really know what to price your OnlyFans page at when you begin. You make an assumption. You say, okay, well, I think it should be, it's worth $10, or I think it's worth $15 or $5. It's basically somewhere in between there, and you really aren't going to know until you go out into the world and try to sell it. What is the right price? So you want to A, B, test your pricing. So that means that you might want to do a month where it goes from $10 to $5 and see, okay, if it goes from $10 to $5, did I, you know, did I increase? Did I grow by three times because of that? Or did I stay the same? And you have to do that because you might just sit at that rate of $10 and be missing out on growth potential. And so it's worth it definitely to do a little bit of price testing, to create some limited time offers, to do all of that, to try to figure out what, what's the sweet spot as far as the pricing is concerned. And really price is a huge factor when it comes to whether or not people subscribe. It's a huge factor on everything. So you definitely want to, to test that out in the first month if possible, or at least the second month. And then lastly, establish a second OnlyFans page. So whether or not you decided to start out with a free OnlyFans page or a paid OnlyFans page, you have the option to have both. And I definitely recommend that you take advantage of that. So now that you've set up, say, a paid page, go ahead and create your free page and use that free page as a giant billboard of advertisement to your paid page or use it to sell custom content, do whatever you want with that page. But keep in mind that you have the ability to have both pages. Now, many people will say, oh, okay, well, that becomes confusing because people, you know, think, okay, I have two pages. It doesn't mean you have to advertise both of those pages at the same time and to the same audiences. You should utilize those pages in different ways. So someone who sees your paid VIP page might not necessarily know you have a free page because you're utilizing the free page to bring in new people and you're not putting the same content onto that free page. So there's a lot of different strategies that you can do with a free page and a second page, however you decide to use it. And I highly recommend that you do so. And I've had a a whole episode and a whole blog on uh, improving your page conversion and, and having that second page is a huge factor to me in that. And it gives you just another page to play with. Uh, and again, we were just talking about A-B testing. It's a, it's a great way to A-B test as well because you could have, you can potentially have two paid pages and you could figure out, okay, which one uh, is doing better price-wise? Which one's getting me that business? And then you just convert the one that didn't do as well over to a free page. I mean, there's just a ton of options that you can do with that second page. So I highly recommend in your first month, if possible, uh, if you have the bandwidth uh, to get it done, to go ahead and create that second page. Okay, so those were the tips for your the rest of your month. And I hope that those tips were helpful and they are not found on the blog. <laughs> so only for people who listen to the podcast. All right, so on to the listener question of the week. 
So a listener asks, what are some suggestions 